So if you turn this little screw here to the right, it'll go faster. If you turn it to the left, it'll go slower. And what it's doing is that it's shortening and lengthening the pendulum. Now just like clock keys can come in different sizes, and six being the most common, the keys that operate the speed of the clock that are on the other end of some of these keys that come with the double-ended keys do come in different sizes. You can buy a complete array of keys like I have here at a clock supplier and these are all the different sizes available and you can see by the openings that uh, they go from larger to smaller to fit, the other, to fit all the different size um, openings to adjust the speed of the clock. Next thing we're going to talk about is some common tools that you may have around the house if you're a handy person or a hobbyist uh, that you can use to uh, repair clocks. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the mainspring from the wheel uh, in order to clean the mainspring because the mainspring we will be cleaning separately uh, from the wheel. The wheel will go in with the other parts into the cleaning solution. Uh, the mainspring is cleaned separately. Now, in order to do that, we have to use what's called a mainspring winder. Now, there's several different kinds on the market. This is called the Ollie Baker style. Turning here, the minute hand, come down to the half hour, it lifts that little hammer and hits the cu cup bell right there. See that? That hammer, see it's lifting it, and then lets it go. And bam, it gets a, it gets a half hour click there. Here's the count wheel. Here's our count lever. And there's also a locking cam inside with a lever. And that lever has to drop down into that groove along with the count lever dropping down. There's two things we're going to need to do before we put together the movement. And that is, on this particular clock, we're going to need to have to tighten these clicks because the click on this is very loose and when you're tightening, or excuse me, when you're winding the clock it could very possibly jump the ratchet here and then the spring would very quickly unwind and break parts in your clock. And connect the spring behind it. Now as we wind, see how nicely that fits right in there and it's not loose? Let's see if it will catch it this time. Looks like to me that we need to make an adjustment because it's not catching. Here comes the hour groove. And it didn't stop. Okay, let's examine further what's going on here to see why it's not stopping. Apply a little bit of oil into the sink. Just a tiny little drop, just enough to wet it. We're not trying to fill the the oil sink. Just add a little bit of lubrication. So we get a good view here. Okay. Just a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side. That should do it. It gives it a little bit more play. Take a look at this finish. Is that something else? All we did was clean it, and put some good quality wax on it, and it's beautiful. I, re I have removed the strike hammer from the uh, movement, and you can see, looking closely here, that that leather is completely worn down, and all you're really having is metal hitting the uh, gong. So we need to drill that remaining leather out of there to replace it. And you can see that it uh, looks to be pretty empty. We got it all cleaned out. And the leather's up inside the hollow punch there. You can see it in the tip. So I need to push that out. So I get push it out all the way. There it goes. All right. And there's our little piece of leather that's going to go into the hammer.
definitely a much warmer sound. 